Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trek on Tuesday. Aaron, we're going to take flight with today's topic. We're really going to soar, I'd say. Today's show, Gina, it's for the birds. It really is for the birds. It, it is one for the birds. Um, now, <laughs> exactly what does that mean? Uh, it means it's going to be great. We're going to talk about birds. Uh, we're going to talk about the migration pattern of birds and how this time of the year, right over here over the next few weeks, is prime time bird watching season. Uh, it's not just random. There's a reason for that. And that's what we're going to talk about. This is all from the April issue of Scout Life magazine, Gina. Yes, this is a, a fun topic, but it does bring up something serious. Uh, Aaron, why did the bird go to the hospital? I don't know, Gina, why? It needed a treatment. Well, as long as we're taking this seriously, uh, yes, Gina. No, this no, no. I want to be a little more lighthearted and just ask you a serious question, but it's a, it's a fun question. Uh, why did the bird go to the dollar store? Because he wanted something, I was going to say cheap, like tweet, tweet, cheap or tweet or something like that. <laughs> Because everything is cheap, cheap, cheap. You yeah, were I knew on it. Was it. Something like that. I knew it was something good. like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but, but we are talking about something serious, and we're talking about an issue that's in the or an article that's in the April issue about migratory birds. And you know, Aaron, what's cooler than talking birds? The only thing cooler than talking birds is actually going out and looking at birds, which is kind of part of what we're going to talk about today. The story is called or, "It's Flight." Aaron, Spelling bees. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize that was another <laughs> See, joke. Yeah, I really. <laughs> so what was the answer? Them. What was the answer again? Spelling bees. Talking birds. Talking birds. Spelling bees. What's cooler than talking birds? Spelling bees. Anyway, shout out to Wendy, who's <laughs> watching from Elgin, Illinois. Thank you, Wendy. Rusty from New Philadelphia. We appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in. What's up, Omid? Thank you for turning in and tuning in as well. Hope you guys enjoy our discussion today. Yes. You know, Aaron, we are talking bird migration today. We're talking about bird migration in North America, but you know, I bet there is bird migration in other places too. Is, it, is this another is this joke? Is this not a you joke? joke? <laughs> <laughs> You're setting me up for another, I don't know, Gina, where do birds migrate in America? <laughs> no, I was just saying, I, I, it makes me think like, oh, mid, what are their bird migration oh, patterns you where you are? Okay, I see. Now I see where you're going. Yeah. Like right. what are they what like are the around the world? I bet they're patterns different than what we Iran. know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I agreed. Yep. Yeah. Um, once again, you can find this story in the April issue. Um, you can read that for free in the Scout Life app. You can check it out in print if it's landed in your mailbox, or you can go to scoutlife.org and read along with us. Now, this story comes from um, two oldies but goodies who write for us. We know them as the Nature Crew. They've been around for a little while, and they bring us some of my favorite stories, personally. I don't know how you feel about the Nature Crew, Aaron. Yeah, what's what's good about Scout Life is we've always had uh, you know, staff writers who write about scouty type stuff, hiking and merit badges and all that stuff like that. But sometimes we'll bring in the experts to write about like nature, hence the nature crew. Like you said, Selena, Birgit Kaiser and Mark Kaiser and nature crew. That's, that's real people. We don't just make that up. That's actually real, a, a real duo uh, writers who are experts on things like bird Birds. migration. We would not, I would know, I would not know where to start. If someone said, no. oh, my boss and said, write a story about bird migration. Well, and that's how I learned about a bird called a gulp actually from the nature crew. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about a gulp, Aaron? Is this another joke? Because I, no, I don't know. Do you know, tell me about a gulp. Well, what I learned is it's, it's like a swallow, but bigger. So uh, we've got some, uh, some good photos to show you as well. I think throughout the show, maybe did Brian pull photos. I think he did. Definitely. Uh, yep. Yep. So uh, Gina, what do you say we get started with our show, our show with our story for today? You go yes. with that? I'll start yeah. off. Perfect. Spring, spring means it's time for the arrival of several billion feathered visitors from Mexico, Central America, and South America. Many of these birds make incredible journeys every year to find the perfect place to nest and raise their young in the United States and Canada. The wide variety of migratory birds includes many colorful songbirds such as warblers, tanagers, vireos, buntings, and orioles to name just a few. There's also ducks, cranes, shorebirds, raptors, and hummingbirds. I didn't know that hummingbirds migrate. Hundreds of bird species in North America migrate each fall and spring, nesting in the northern part of the range and wintering in the southern. 
Migration distances vary from only a few miles up and down a mountain to hundreds or thousands of miles. Do you know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, being sort of interested in the idea of birds migrating and in the fall and the spring, you would look up and you'd see a huge flock of birds. And as I got older, I kind of started to wonder, is it really that simple? They fly north in the summer and south in the winter. It, it kind of is. It's kind of how it works, actually. It's kind of interesting. But then there are probably people who live in like temperate climates and they have certain birds that stick around all right. year. It's kind of confusing, but we're going to put some myth. We're going to dispel a myth here. Why do birds migrate? Um, and it, it's not because your mom hears them speaking and says, that's foul language and sends them to another state. No. Why do birds migrate? Some species are considered residents, such as cardinals, American robins, Amer American goldfinches, chickadees, and teak mice. These, they stay in the same location year round, finding enough food to raise young in the summer to keep them alive during the winter. But the majority of birds migrate because of the benefits of migrating outweigh the cost of staying put. There are often better food sources, weather, and habitat in the tropics. Species that winter in the U.S. make up for this by having more offspring than those that migrate. And obviously, Earth you know, oh, sorry, Gina, I was just going to show you, you know what that bird was that was Brian just showed us on the screen there. No. I, I probably don't need to tell our viewers this. That's obviously a yellow rumped warbler. Oh. I'm sure that our, our viewers probably already knew that. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure that. Uh, Good shout out, because if that. you are a bird expert, we have a wonderful bird quiz on scoutlife.org. You can take it and put your bird knowledge to the test. We have... Yeah. um. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, well, the pretty bluebird that Brian's about to put up, that's, I mean, again, obviously, I know, Gina, you know this. It's right. a male indigo bunting. I love a bunting. Actually, that is maybe the prettiest bird I've ever seen. It really is pretty, isn't it? It's a cool color. Yeah. Um, and by the way, Rob, only one of us on the show is a bird brain. At least today, okay. you know. Um, birds migrate along four major flyways in the North, in North America, the Pacific, Central, Mississippi, and Atlantic. Each spring, most Western species travel from Mexico into the U.S. from the tropics. Many Eastern species launch from the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and fly over the Gulf of Mexico to reach the southeastern U.S. Some birds that winter in the tropics fly north through the Caribbean, using the islands as stopovers until they reach South Florida. That's what I'd do if I was a bird. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like people. They set yeah. up little stops, friendly rest stops at convenient places. In the Caribbean. Like if you could stop in the Caribbean... Why wouldn't you, right? You right, we do. There, we can, you, we do. Exactly right. Yes, yes. Um, one thing that's interesting, Gina, is that birds often migrate at night. I think that my house must be under uh, a popular migration pattern because I swear uh, certain times of the year we get woken up in the middle of the night by, oh. it sounds like geese or something flying above our house. I swear they're like two feet above our bedroom. I think maybe they, maybe they stop in our backyard or something in the middle of the night. It is so loud. That uh, reminds me of a scary movie. Yes, exactly. There, there, was, there have been, I think, a handful of scary movies about that. Uh, but most birds do migrate at night using astronomical clues to help guide them. Do you know what kind of birds those are right there, Gina? I actually do know that those are a line of geese passing a full geese. moon. And, and do you know what state they're in? Can you so, tell by the picture? So, yeah, by the way the moon is positioned there, <laughs> the color is probably somewhere in California. Maybe the northern section, I'm going to guess. That's just a guess, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, yes, you're right. <laughs> it, it's geese are. I'm pretty sure what I hear squawking in my backyard during the during certain times of the year. Uh, they use astronomical clues to help guide them. Uh, also at night, air currents are typically more stable with no thermal drafts to slow them down. Plus, the birds are less likely to overheat from constant flapping or become food for daytime predators such as hawks. They use flight calls, which is different from their normal songs, Gina, to communicate with flock mates so they don't get separated, and also to help each other navigate around obstacles such as skyscrapers and cell towers. Interesting. Birds that cross the Gulf of Mexico fly up to 650 miles in one swoop. That amazing voyage may take 18 hours for small songbirds. Wow, can you imagine flying nonstop for 18 hours, leaving in the evening and arriving the next afternoon in the U.S.? They'll stop for food and water before continuing north. Bad weather, including rain and strong headwinds, brings fallouts. In these situations, large numbers of exhausted birds will land anywhere they can as soon as they reach shore. Otherwise, a strong tailwind can help push them beyond the coast, and they might continue a while longer until they need to rest and eat. It's just like a family a vacation, Gina, and a car trip. You just kind of go as far as you can until somebody gets grouchy and tired. Well, it is, but... 
think about it is a lot more like a car trip because I was sitting here thinking, boy, we humans have it so easy. We complain when we have to take like, you know, a three hour plane ride. We think that's so long. And all you're doing is sitting there eating, all maybe and then watch the movie or something having like a that, soda. Right? Yeah. Yep. And yep. yet these birds are flying for more hours than we would spend in a car. Yeah, they're out there doing the work. Yeah, doing the for work. Sure. That's for yep. sure. Yep. Now, there is something important I want to get to. Some comments. Rob's got hmm. um, an important question. Why okay. does a yeah. bird? How does a bird with a broken wing manage to land safely with its sparrow shoot? <laughs> That's good, Rob. Where'd you get that? That sounds like a Scout Life magazine joke right there. Yeah, definitely. Well, well here's another one. How mm -hmm. do crows stick together in a flock? Velcro. That's very Scout Life magazine. Yes, that is extremely Scout Lifey right there. And speaking of, you can submit jokes. If you got your own bird jokes, submit those over at scoutlife.org. We, mm -hmm. we want your jokes. We need your jokes. Mm -hmm. um, when does a teacher carry bird seed? <laughs> when, when there is a parrot teacher conference. I very love it. I good, love it. Thank Christine. you, Christine. <laughs> I wanted to say one more thing. This this is a real thing. Okay. I know you don't okay. want to trust that at any point. Sure it this is, is right. a real thing. In my neighborhood, we have a little goose like population that lives in we have a pond pretty close by. What language do they speak? And that I don't know. I am on the edge of my seat to find out. Portuguese. No, <laughs> this is true. And, and what's interesting, and I would love to have the nature crew's take on this. They do not migrate because those bad boys are well fed. Yep. They can handle the cold. I don't know what they do in the heat. The people here are very concerned about them at all times. I can tell from our, you know, neighborhood app where people talk and chat. Yep. They here all the time so something sure has happened okay. where their migration pattern is totally I bet, I bet they've learned yeah they have everything they need here right i wonder if people feed them maybe and that people probably them... bring them inside in the air yeah. conditioning during the summer <laughs> right so don't mess i think yeah. the moral really is don't mess with it because they kind of need that for their kind survival. of not a yeah it's kind of a leave no trace violation a little bit there i to, agree to mess with those things yeah i agree absolutely yeah well that brings us to how can you help migrating birds mm-hmm in addition to climate change and habitat loss, birds face huge obstacles during migration. Weather, predators, colliding with glass buildings, outdoor cats, and eating insects sprayed with toxic pe pesticides. No wonder numbers have been plummeting for many species over the past century. But you can help. Use UV stickers or screens on windows. Keep your kitty inside or on a leash or in a catio outdoors. Plant native plants. Use fewer yard chemicals and provide fresh water and food for birds. Spring migration is a fabulous time to go birding. You can try attracting birds to your yard with feeders and bass. This might be the only time during the year that you'll find certain species. For example, at our home in North Florida, we get rose-breasted grosbeaks only during spring and fall migration. For about a week, they visit our feeders and bird baths and use the native habitat around our house for rest and protection. Then they're back on their way to their final destination. And again, I don't need to tell you that that, that was a rose-breasted grosbeak right there on the screen that Brian showed us. A really cool looking bird. Of course. Now, I am laughing a little bit at the idea of putting the cats I know on a leash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard the expression catio before. Oh, yeah. Instead of a patio. That's, a that's, an, that's an interesting thing. Okay. All right. People do that, I guess. Now, Aaron, why did the pelican get kicked out of the restaurant? Why did the pelican get kicked out of the restaurant? Uh, he couldn't pay his bill. Yeah, you had a very big bill, and I suppose he couldn't pay. Well, they should have given him a chance at least. Just because the bill is big, there's, there's no reason to kick him out just for that. Give him well, a chance to pay it at least. That's what I think. I was actually thinking the same thing. What kind of bird doesn't need a comb? Mm. Uh, a bald eagle. Yes. Good job. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes. Now, yes. here's one I picked up from um, Scout Life Magazine, our mascot scout who writes for what is currently called Hitch and Rack in mm -hmm. the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, what's an eagle's favorite TV show? Hmm. I don't know, Jenna. What is an eagle's favorite TV show? America's Got Talons. Like the, the claws. Exactly. That an eagle would have. Yes. <laughs> Uh, did you know, Gina, that in order to monitor, uh, this is not a joke, this is actually real, in order to monitor migration patterns of birds, there's a nifty tool that scientists use, and that tool is? 
That's right, Gina. It's the weather radar. Flocks of birds traveling together are often large enough to see on radar. Using this data, scientists can see how many migrate from Canada, the Nor Canada and the northern U.S. down to temperate, temperate subtropical areas of the United States, uh, which is considered short distance migration. Seems like a long distance to me, but versus how many migrate from North America all the way down to the tropics. Those are both pretty long distance, but I guess one of them is shorter than the other one. That right there, Gina, what you're looking at is the spring bird migration. It looks like they're going right over Florida Sea Base. That's in the Florida Keys right there. They're going right over uh, the island. Munson Island, I think, is right down in there. So that's where yeah, they are right there. I actually think you're right. So if you want to see a lot of birds, there's probably a few times a year you could head to the Sea Base. Absolutely there are. Yes, absolutely. And Sea Base is definitely the kind of place, too, that keeps a certain population of birds all year round because it's just so pleasant. Again, they're like humans. They know where to just keep hanging out. Yeah, exactly. Are you are you a bird watcher, Gina? Do you do a lot of bird watching? No, do you? No, I never have. You know, one of our coworkers is, is, a, is an avid bird watcher and I have been out before and, and if I've seen a really cool bird, I'll, I'll send her a picture of it. Have you ever done that? And she will write back right away. Oh, that's a yellow tailed so mockingbird or whatever. Yeah, she can identify them. She's very, very good at it. Did you, did you know, Gina, that you don't, really need too much equipment to go bird watching there's one thing you need any guess your you eyes need? a set of binoculars would be ideal you really need a good set of binoculars to go bird watching it's pretty I'm easy fine. to carry around a set of binoculars yeah or you use your eyes with the binoculars I right think. but yes but yes yes you use those with your eyes pretty lightweight you don't have to spend a lot of money on it it's a pretty decent investment if you're you know going cub scout hiking or anything like that bring a pair of binoculars with you you don't have to have everybody doesn't need their own set necessarily you can share Kind of cool. Right. And um, the going back to um, our coworker who knows a lot about bird watching, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. she actually reviewed our bird watching quiz and said, gave it two thumbs up. She said, it's challenging. Okay. So, you guys, she checked it, it's accurate and it's challenging. So, definitely go to scoutlife.org and try out that um bird watching quiz are you laughing because you're reading the jokes the no comments? i'm i'm laughing because i would fail the bird watching quiz I it's hard the way i could do it yeah i, I would fail it and i made yeah. it yeah <laughs> right. just tell you, you that. wrote the thing yeah, yeah exactly um another thing i was gonna say like you were saying you text her whenever you see a bird and she can tell you what it is mm -hmm. have you seen these new bird feeders that exist i think they're super cool like um a bird will land and it has a camera, so it'll. You think it's going to be a joke again? It's I do think. Yeah, I went for the punchline. I have not seen the new feeders. Do you know? Tell me <laughs> they land on the bird feeder, and the camera alerts you and says there's motion at the bird feeder, and so then you can see the bird live. And mm -hmm. the bird feeder keeps a catalog. It, it uses AI to try to tell you what bird it is. It keeps a log, so you can see all of the birds that have visited your feeder. Probably recognizes. It can recognize the color and the size and the shape and all the stuff like that. I bet. Yes, and then you can yeah. go fact check it. You know, with somebody like our coworker. Mm -hmm. Because it's yes. got a, a log of all the photos of the birds that landed there. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. That's very interesting. And it, and it kind of leads me to think of another question. Um, where do birds invest their money, Gina? I don't know. That's important to talk about. Yeah. Where? It's in, they invest in the stork, stork market. <sighs> See, I thought you were going to say stock market. But it's a stork <laughs> market because it's birds. <laughs> That's exactly right, Gina. Um, Aaron, what kind of bird works at a construction site? Well, this one's kind of obvious. A crane, of course. Yes. A Rob, crane. you yes. clearly you've been a volunteer for a long time. Mm -hmm. And yep. you're clearly a dad. Rob is both a dad, clearly a dad, and a at least at one point a Cub Scout volunteer for sure. Well, Aaron, this has been a great topic. I, I like talking birds. This isn't our first time talking birds. If you go back in the archives a yeah. bit, you'll see where we talked about bird watching previously and how you can use it to get the bird studies, right? Bird studies, mirror badge? Uh, yeah, called? bird study. Bird study, mirror okay. badge is exactly right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, now's a good time to get out there and start working on some of those requirements for the bird study, mirror badge, which might be to see a certain amount of birds in the wild. Now's a good time to do it. Yeah, what we just learned is you're going to see some birds now's right now that you'll mm -hmm. not see throughout that's, most of the year. That's exactly right. Good show, Gina. This has been very fun. Before we let you go, of course, I have one very important question to ask you. What's it okay. called when it's raining ducks and geese? Hmm. What? Foul weather. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Rob, for all the jokes. We appreciate that. Thank you, Gina. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Bye, everybody.